Hello, friends and family. Welcome back. We are continuing our deep dive into Ernest from Earth, and we are looking at our Chapter 7 unit of the Curriculum Guide. Our social-emotional learning focus for this chapter is social awareness, and this is just sort of in a transitional part of the story where Ernest is becoming a little bit more aware of Dad's family and they're getting ready for what's going to be the, the next stage of him being immersed in this new culture, this new society where he finds himself. So the first question on the curriculum guide for chapter 7 is, as Dat searches through clothes for Ernest, he mentions that his mother hems his pants and that his good-wearing sh shoes are two sizes too big. What might this tell us about Dat's family? <laughs> That's something if, if you grew up without a lot of money, it's those sorts of things I remember from being a kid are like the, the hand-me-down clothes from friends or relatives or the clothes that were intentionally bought two sizes too big because you're going to keep growing and we're not going to buy a new pair of pants or a new pair of shoes every six months. So these are going to have to last you a while and we'll hem them up and we'll take the hem out later as you grow, those sorts of things. So that's that was sort of my subtle indication of, and this is revealed a little bit more in the story, that Dad's family does okay, especially for a, a family of, of red-skinned individuals in this world, they, Dad's parents have jobs and they're, they're doing okay. They're doing better than maybe a lot of people, but we look at some of the socioeconomic depression in this story as well, and this is just sort of that little indication that they still have to be concerned about those sorts of things, about how they're spending their money. And they're, they're, I think there's a sense of pride in that, in little things like you have this nice pair of shoes that when it's time to be dressed up for something that you're wearing these, but yes, they're two sizes too big because they're going to have to last you a long time. And this is something that I related to, like growing up and, sort of valuing those things, understanding the value of some of those, what do I want to say, some of those just physical possessions that we have, that like those things do cost money and they're expected to be sort of taken care of and used for a long time and that sort of thing. The second question, Ernest thanks Dat and Dat says, this is the easy part. What do you think he means by that? And what difficulties do you think might lie ahead? Well, so far, during Ernest's time on Targ, he's just interacting with Dad, who pretty quickly they've established a rapport and they're kind of becoming friends immediately. Ernest hasn't had to deal with any other interactions yet. He's, of course, still dealing with the uncertainty about where his family is and if they're okay. But in terms of concerns right now on the planet of Targ, things are pretty calm, pretty okay. And Dat is sort of indicating that he realized that, like, this is the easy part. It's getting some different clothes on you and stuff like that. Like, we're going to have to see what happens from here. So then students might make predictions about, is Ernest going to get discovered quickly? What are Dad's parents going to say? Those sorts of things. This is, this is going to happen. Hasn't happened yet. Third question. What do we know about Dad's parents from the brief description of this chapter? So we sort of get introduced to Dad's parents without really being introduced to them. The boys are looking at a picture from their wedding. We really get physical descriptions that Dad's father is tall, sort of a strong athletic build, very deep red skin complexion. The mother is a brighter red skin hue. And it's interesting, the only reason I even bring up skin complexion frequently in the story is because this is a part of the story. If I was talking about, 
if I was writing a story in Earth in contemporary setting, I would not spend a lot of time talking about skin complexion, but that's kind of why I bring it up, because that is going to be a theme throughout the story. It's just kind of continuing to remind the reader that that element is there. But the physical description of Ernest's mother, she's sor shorter, softer features, but big, broad smile, brilliant eyes that sort of light up the photograph, those sorts of things. So kind of create this lovely image, this photo of them. And we do find out that Dad says his mom is a teacher. It's a Sunday. I kept things. Again, this was just my my easy way to not have to explain a bunch of stuff while writing. It's like, okay, if I've already sort of established that these, uh, these worlds that have humanoid type societies and stuff on them seem to go through the same or a similar process of development as Earth, it just makes it easier to be like, yep, and we're going to have the same number of days in a week and all those sorts of things. It'd just be easier. So this is a, it's a Sunday. We know that Ernest, or excuse me, that Dad's mom is a teacher. They don't have school on Sunday. That's why Dad is hanging around at home, but his folks usually do some work in town on Sunday to get ready for the week, but she'll be coming home soon. That lets them know, like, yeah, we got to get out of the, the house here pretty quick. Um, then, question number four, Dat says, there are always people over for supper or staying for the night at this house. Why do you think this is the case, and what might this tell us about Dat's parents? Students might make a lot of different assumptions. They, they might come up with a lot of different ideas why that's the case. Dat basically tells Ernest, like, look, you'll come out, you hang out with me in the woods, and my mom whistles for supper. We will come home, and it'll be fine. There's always a bunch of people around for supper. There's often people spending the night. My parents will hardly even notice it. He's trying to set them at ease. That could tell us a lot of different things. One thing that might tell us is that Dad's parents are continually trying to help others, trying to support others, bring them in for a meal, for a place to stay. And that that's something we see a little more in the upcoming chapters. And I'll, I'll talk about that more in the next couple of chapters, but that's something that, again, I drew from my own experience. First, the whistle. My mom has one of the all-time mother whistles. Uh, she does the, she puts her fingers in her mouth and whistles, and it is extraordinarily loud. So that was when I was a kid, if we were out playing in the neighborhood, that sort of thing, you heard that whistle, and it was time to get stepping. So that just sort of stuck in my memory. And then a big part of the Sparrow family, Mr. and Mrs. Sparrow, are based on what I saw from my grandparents, actually, my maternal grandparents, who had 14 of their own kids at different time brought in 10 foster kids to live with them, worked very blue collar jobs, did not have a lot of money, but were always trying to find ways to support others, feed others, give other people a place to stay. That's kind of who I, I based the sparrows on a little bit. Not that they don't have this large family of children, it's just that, and we talk about that more later in the story, but this idea of like, even though we don't have much, we're going to give as much as we can to support everyone else. So that, that becomes clearer as the story goes on, but that's really what I was thinking of when I was writing those characters and those elements in the story. And even the house... As I'm picturing the house, as I'm writing, and just where things are set up, the rooms, in my head, essentially the house is my grandparents' house. More or less. The, it's got, I kind of combined the, the, 
the exterior of the house and some of the features of the house in my head were from the house that my family moved to when I was in middle school and then my, con my parents continued to live in an old farmhouse and then a lot of the interior elements are actually based on my grandparents' house, just how things are set up. Not that I even give a ton of description of how one might navigate through the house, but for me, when I'm writing, I have to have a pretty clear picture of where things are at, what things look like, and that's actually what I was picturing, was that house, because it had that sense of love and family and community that I wanted to convey in the story, so I had to kind of put myself in that setting. And uh, I didn't have an extended thinking segment for this chapter on the curriculum guide. It's a fairly straightforward chapter, sort of a, another transition into what the next phase of the story is going to be. So that wraps up our analysis of chapter seven of Ernest from Earth. Continue to check these out. We'll continue to read the story and break it down and kind of talk through where I was at for the writing process. Until then, much love.